Hey, it's Miss Magnus on the Turn of Your Library, and it's time for virtual story time. Not quite live. Okay, so here we go. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. It's not fans of story time. We clap and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. Stop! It's the fans of story time. We stomp and sing hello. We weave and sing hello. Hello. We weave and sing hello. Hello. With our fans of story time. We weave and sing hello. Hello. Hi. And welcome to virtual story time. Not quite live. So we do these story times on Saturdays because. We have wonderful crafts that we pass out every week. And so we decide to read some books that are on the topic. So this week or this upcoming week's craft is burgers and fries. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Later today, you should be seeing a video from Miss Brooke as she explains how to put together this really wonderfully yummy craft. And without further ado, here are the books that we're reading today. We've got classic twist on Jack and the Beanstalk called Jack and the Beanstalk and the French fries. Mm -hmm. Yum. <laughs> Spire Sandwiches by Claire Friedman and Sue Hendra. Sorry, I forgot to say that Jack and the Beanstalk and the French fries is by Mark Teague. Burger Boy. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. <laughs> by Alan Durant. Illustrated by Mae Matsuoka. And Monsters Don't Eat Properly. <laughs> Preposterous. That's by Barbara Jean Hicks, illustrated by Sue Hendra. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to our first book. First, we have Jack and the Beanstalk and the Fries, right? <laughs> Sorry, give me a minute. Here we go. I just want to cue this up. Okay, so Jack and the Beanstalk and the French Fries. Let's read it. Jack and the Beanstalk and the French Fries. Let's find out more about Jack's adventure. And I think we're going to use the Elmo Statue to read this yummy book. Jack and the Beanstalk and the French Fries, written by Mark Teague. Published by. Oh, I skipped that page. Published by Orchard Books in New York, which is an imprint of Scholastic New York. I'm sorry, Scholastic Incorporated. <laughs> Jack lived with his mother in a small house at the edge of a village. They were very poor. They were so poor that when their cow stopped giving milk, Jack's mother feared that they would starve. Quickly said, she said, take the cow to the market and sell her for as much as you can. Everything depends on it. Okay. So this story is sounding quite familiar, right? Jack and the Beanstalk story. They haven't changed that part. Jack headed off with the cow in tow. After a while, he stopped to rest, and when he did, a stranger appeared. I will trade you these magic beans for that cow, said the old man. Magic beans, said Jack. You must think I'm a dodo. <laughs> Please. Not at all, said the stranger. And these beans are quite magical. Plant them and you will have all that you desire. Honest, said Jack. What he desired at the moment was food. Okay, so is he planting beans? Is he going to look for food? Honest, said the stranger. So they made the deal and Jack returned home with the beans. Okay, so this is still checking out, right? Sounding quite like the Jack and the Beanstalk story. Where did the little fries come in? Foolish boy, cried his mother. You have ruined us. She tossed the beans out a window and sent Jack to bed without any supper. When he awoke next morning, a strange light filled Jack's room. Giant leaves poked through the window. He stuck his head out and saw an enormous beanstalk growing in the backyard. Ma! He cried, running downstairs. Check out the beanstalk! Oh, Jack was a happy camper. I already did! And look, I made his bean porridge for breakfast, says mother. Oh, Jack ate the porridge. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was better than starving. Well, I guess our problem is solved, he said, and headed off to sleep. 
After that, Jack and his mother ate beans all the time. Mm. <laughs> they ate bean salad and bean soup, pickle beans and refried bean beans, baked beans, minced beans, mashed beans, breaded beans, beans, sprouts, and bean dip. After a while, Jack grew tired of beans. Okay, you know what? Like, this is a blessing, but I need something different. He dreamed of burgers. Ooh. <laughs> kind of like the burgers from that thing. He dreamed of french fries. Ooh. Couldn't we have something else? He grumbled, staring at his bean chowder. Why would we want anything else? His mother said. Beans are nutritious and delicious, and best of all, they're free. Oh, listen, I don't have to pay for them. I would eat beans every minute of every meal. And thanks to the magic bean stock, there were always more of them. The stock produced enormous quantities of beans. They grew through the spring, the summer, and the fall. Even in winter, they kept coming. And that's very interesting, because not all plants can survive the winter. Jack's mother shared beans with the neighbors and the neighbors and the neighbors' neighbors and the neighbors' neighbors' neighbors. Soon, the entire village was eating them. At first, everyone seemed grateful, but the feeling didn't last. At dinner time, Jack could hear the howls of children from blocks away. Please! They cried. No, my beans! <laughs> I can't eat another one! Oh, my God. School was even worse. Kids glared at him. Over their bean-filled lunches, his classmates said, It's all your fault! You should have never planted that thing! I didn't, said Jack, not really! But nobody believed him. Big kids threw bean sandwiches at him. Bullies chased him home from school. This has to stop, he thought, but he didn't know what to do. Now, this is definitely a segue from the original story, because I don't remember Jack going to school with anyone, or, like, them sharing the beans or anything. You know, like, this is, this is different. On his birthday, Jack was given a bean bag, a bean shooter, and a slice of bean cake with a dollop of ice bean. That does it, he thought as he lay in bed. That bean stack's gotta go. <laughs> Next morning, he grabbed a hatchet and stomped outside. He was about to give the stock a good whack when the stranger appeared once again. Wait, said the old man. Aren't you curious what's up there? Hmm. I don't know what's up there, said Jack. I mean, I know what's up there, said Jack. Beans, okay? That's all there's up there. I'm not going up there. Don't be foolish, said the stranger. Climb here. I'll give you a boost. Okay, this old man is very invested. Came back to check on the status of those beans. Just then, an angry mob appeared at the end of the street. Among them were the worst bullies from school. They carried torches and pitchforks and chanted, No more beans! No more beans. One of them spotted Jack. Look, it's a bean kid! Okay, said Jack. I'll climb. He gave his hatchet to the stranger and scrambled up the beanstalk. No, anything to get away from those bullies, huh? Up and up he went until the village looked small below him. Jack wasn't crazy about heights, but bullies were worse. He kept climbing. The beanstalk disappeared into the cloud. He realized he was hungry for anything other than beans. But there was nothing to eat and no way to go but up. Oh, I guess he made it this far. He might as well go all the way. Finally, the beanstalk arrived at the top of a cliff. From there, a path wandered off into the distance. Jack followed the path until he came to the front door of a huge castle. Hunger made him bold. There must be food in here, he thought as he slipped inside. Hmm. You think there's food in this? Castle. Jack wandered gloomy hallways until he came to an immense kitchen. A giant woman stood at a wooden table. She was canning beans. Ugh, said Jack. What are you doing here? She cried, dropping her can. I was hoping for something to eat. Silly boy, don't you know where you are? My husband is a giant twice as big as me. And lately, he's been very grumpy. I'll bet it's the beans, said Jack. Don't be delicious. Don't be ridiculous, she said. Beans are nutritious and delicious. And best of all, they're free. Oh, sounds just like his mom. But Jack was right. Ever since the mighty stock had appeared, the giants had been eating nothing but beans. And Mr. Giant was sick of them. 
Oh, give me anything but beans bagging out of it. I'm done. Loud footsteps sounding in the hallway. Fee fi fo say what for watch. Quick! Hissed. Mrs. Giant, you must hide. Jack dove headfirst into a flour barrel. A moment later, Mr. Giant strode into the kitchen. Boy, I'm hungry. Good, Mrs. Giant said. I made you a nice bean salad. Bean salad, he cried. But all we ever have is beans. And I hate beans. We love beans, she said. And they're good for you. How do you think you got so big? Don't know, but you eat them and you're puny. I'm busy, she said. Now eat your salad and stop complaining. Listen, you have a meal. And it's a ready meal every week. Okay. The giant ate, but didn't stop complaining. Beans, he grumbled. What I wouldn't give for a plate of french fries. Without thinking, Jack said, here, here. <laughs> what was that? Cried the giant, leaping to his feet. Nothing, said the wife. I know what I heard, and it came from that flour barrel. The giant stomped over to the barrel and plucked Jack up by his feet. He turned to his wife. What is this? It's just a boy, said Mrs. Giant. He was looking for something to eat. Maybe he is something to eat. Look, he's already breaded. Don't eat the stuffing, he said. Yes, said Jack. That's disgusting. The giant set Jack on the table, but he was still angry. You know what's disgusting? Beans! He dumped a bushel on his head. See? Disgusting. He turned over another bushel and another. He picked up great handfuls of beans and tossed them in the air. Soon beans were firing everywhere. Jack joined in. They made a terrific not, uh, mess as they chanted, No more beans! No more beans! No more beans! Stop! cried Mrs. Giant. Both of you should be ashamed. If you don't like beans, then plant something else. Plant, said Jack. Something else, said the giant. A vegetable garden, you ninny, with potatoes, for instance. Why, taters, said her husband. To make french fries, cried Jack. Of course, we'll plant them right away. First, you need to clean the kitchen, said Mrs. Giant. Listen, she did not slave all day over that kitchen, over that uh, food, over that stove, to have someone come in and mess up her kitchen and then walk off. You better clean that kitchen, okay? As soon as they were done, they headed down the bean stuck. The bullies were waiting at the bottom. There he is, they cried when Jack appeared. Jack wasn't worried. Meet my friend, <laughs> he said. Once the uproar died down and the bullies went home, Jack and the giant spent the rest of the day planting a garden. Yeah, this is a huge departure from the original story. Grow, shouted the giant. Patience, said Jack. Just as giant grew bored and headed back up the shop. But Jack tended his garden every day. The vegetables grew and grew. See, the giant was used to eat magic food stuff. I had to sprout up the minute you plant them, right? Like, overnight. But when you're doing it, you know, from the earthly realm, non, no magic means it's going to take some time. Oh, wait. Look at that. In fact, whatever magic had produced the beanstalk seemed to be working on the other plants as well. I stand corrected. It seems that wherever he planted them was right where the beanstalk was, and that magic helped these to sprout quicker. Before long, the backyard was bursting with carrots, corn, potatoes, tomatoes, and asparagus. Everything was enormous. There was so much food, they didn't know what to do. So Jack and his mother cooked up a feast. The smell spread across the village and all the way up the beanstalk. By dinner time, everyone was there, even the giants. It was the most stupendous meal everyone could remember. They all agreed that the food was delicious and nutritious, and best of all, were the french fries. Mm -mm. Man, reading this book kind of makes me want to have some french fries right now. Do you guys want to have some french fries? Don't forget to pick up the craft, and you will. Oh! <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk. And the French fries. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let's take a break to sing a song. And you know what? This one is apropos because <laughs> we 
basically just finished reading that book and now I really want some french fries. So this book is called I Am Hungry and it's to the tune of Are You Sleeping? So here we go. Let's sing it together. I am hungry. I am hungry. What should I eat? What should I eat? Think I'll have a burger. Think I'll have a burger with or without meat. With or without meat. I am hungry. I am hungry. What should I eat? What should I eat? Think I'll have some fries. Think I'll have some french fries with lots of heat. With lots of heat. Think I am hungry. I'm still hungry. What should I eat? What should I eat? Think I'll have some ice cream. Think I'll have some ice cream. Cold and sweet. Cold and sweet. Ooh. <laughs> that was a yummy song. I kind of want to now go get some burger, fries, and ice cream. Well, I can't right now because i got to read you guys a couple more stories. So here we go. Next up we have spider sandwiches. Mmm. Come eat with Max. He has a monster appetite. He eats such yucky, mucky food, his mealtimes are a fright. He loves to glug slug milkshakes through a stinky hosepipe straw. And as for beetle cookies, he can always munch one more. Mmm, his meals are sounding pretty interesting. For breakfast every morning, he chews toenail scrambled eggs. Then guzzle down a smoothie made from crushed grasshopper legs. Mm. He buys snacks on the internet from as far away as space. Spiky space ants, moon goo got wobs, are all stuffed in his face. Mm. Yummers. By lunchtime, Max is starving. Scrumptious lice rice. I can't wait. He slurps it super fast before the lice crawl off his plate. Mm. Yeah, this is sounding really interesting. He bought the monster cookbook for some recipe ideas. The best was slime eel noodles <laughs> served with hairy fried bat's ears. Yum. Mm, delectable. From pickled worms to squash flag jam, Max beams, hooray, please. He spreads them on his crackers, poo, with smelly fish eye cheese. Mm, yum. So delicious gurgles Max with a massive goo filled grin, cold crunchy cockroach chowder drip dribbling down his chin. Mm, yum. Tadpole ice cream snail trail sauce. Think that's Gorman slurp. They all mix in his tummy. Look out, here comes a big burp. Rats tail pizza, blue mold chip, bug, bug burgers are a treat. But when it comes to mealtime, there's one thing he will always eat. Squiggly spider sandwiches, he scarfs them down so fast. He eats their heads and sticky webs, and but saves their legs for last. Mm. Max will eat up anything that oozes gunk and gloop. But even monsters gasp no no in, but even monsters gasp no thanks when faced with green sprout soup. Ah. Yeah. They have limits. They have their limits. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed spider sandwiches. That was a really fun read. Um and it was very insightful to see what monsters eat. That may be similar to us. They eat bug burgers, we eat non bug burgers. Well, here for you, I have another book. It's called Burger Boy. Mm. Burger Boy by Alan Durant, illustrated by Mai or May Matsuka. Matsuoka. This book is published by Clarion Books in New York. Benny didn't like vegetables. He didn't like carrots. He didn't like peas. He didn't like broccoli or Brussels sprouts, lettuce, tomato, or cauliflower. Benny liked burgers. Benny loved burgers. Burgers were the only things Benny would eat. If you don't watch out, you'll turn into a burger one day, warned his mom. Ooh, you ever heard of that one? If you like, if you eat too much of this thing, you're going to turn into it. 
if you uh, keep making that face, you're going to freeze that way. You too don't have to, right? And one day, Benny did. Ooh, maybe I know. <laughs> he and his mother had just finished lunch at his favorite restaurant, Bigger Burgers, when the dog ran up and started to sniff him. Mmm, said the dog. Tasty. <laughs> he wagged his tail. He opened his mouth. Run, Benny, run, cried Benny's mom. Oh, and no. Benny raced away down the street with his dog close behind. I'm not a burger. I'm a boy, shouted Benny. Leave me alone. But the dog kept on chasing him, and soon there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dogs coming. I'm going to hold it up so you guys can pause and count these dogs. Ten dogs chasing after Burger Boy, all barking and howling and hounding poor Benny. <laughs> Benny ran into a field that was full of cows. Who is that? I'll be safe here. But the cows switched their tails and crowded around him. Don't you know what burgers are made of? They mooed angrily. I'm not a burger. I'm a boy. Shouted Benny. Leave me alone. <laughs> Benny took off again through the field across the stream and down the road with a pack of dogs and a herd of cows chasing after him. Benny saw a group of boys playing ball. Help! I'm in trouble! Save me! He gasped. The boys stopped playing. They couldn't believe their eyes. Their tummies rumbled and they licked their lips. It's burger time! <laughs> they cried. I'm not a burger! I'm a boy! shouted Benny. Leave me alone! <laughs> Why can't anyone listen to me? Poor Benny. Off he ran again, uphill and down. With the pack of dogs, the herd of cows, and the hungry boys chasing after him. Oh no! A busy road blocked Benny's way. He couldn't go forward. He couldn't go back. He was trapped. Just then, a van screeched to a stop in front of him. Hey, need a ride? Quick, hop in, said Carl, the driver. It was the owner of Bigger Burgers. Ooh, at least I'm safe, thought Benny as the van drove away. Well, the Owner took Benny into Bigger Burgers and put him on display. Come on, come on, only a dollar to see the giant burger, he cried. I'm not a burger, I'm a boy, cried, shouted Benny. Leave me alone. A talking burger? Even better, said the owner. I'll charge twice the price. Things were looking bad for Benny. He wondered if he'd ever see his home again. When suddenly his mom ran in. That's no burger, that's my son, she shouted. Let him go. He didn't give her consent. You can't just put someone up there and sell him to the highest bidder. She took Benny home and fed him fruits and vegetables. Slowly, his burger body turned boyish at the edges, and finally, he was back to his old shape again. Hooray! I'm cured! <laughs> I'll never eat another burger, cried Benny. And he didn't. He ate carrots and peas, broccoli and Brussels sprouts, lettuce, tomato, and cauliflower. Now Benny liked vegetables. He loved vegetables. Vegetables were the only thing he'd eat. His mother was worried. Benny, she said, you better watch out. If you eat vegetables, if all you eat is vegetables, one day you'll turn into one. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, goodness. And now he's turned into a carrot. And look, there's a little bunny that says, mmm, tasty. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that title. Let's do one more song and then another book. And then I'm out. So this one is called B-U-R-G-E-R, -E Burger. It's spelled out Burger. And this is to the tune of B-I-N-G-O. So it's going to be kind of fun. <laughs> so here we go. There are only two verses to this one. <clears throat> I had a burger, good and yummy. Now it's inside my tummy. Oh, B-U-R-G-E-R. R D E R B U R D E R and it was all of mine. Oh, I just had some fries to eat and they were such a treat. O oh, F R I E S F R I E S F R I E S and it was all of mine. Oh, yay! <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> all right, so we got one more book to read. <clears throat> 
called Monsters Don't Eat Broccoli. This book is by Barbara Jean Hicks, illustrated by Sue Hendra. Published by Alfred A. Knopf, which is based in New York. The waitress in this restaurant just doesn't have a clue. Monsters don't eat broccoli. How could she think we do? Mm -mm, we don't want that. No, thank you. We'd rather eat, we'd rather snack on tractors. Mmm, three for two track tractors. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Enjoy steam rollers. Or a rocket ship or two. Mmm. Or tender trailer tidbits. Or a wheelie steely stew. Monsters don't bum bo fi fi monsters don't eat broccoli. <laughs> monsters don't eat broccoli or artichokes or greens. We can't abide alfalfa sprouts or slimy lima beans. No, thank you. Yep. But redwoods are delectable. Mm -hmm. And folders, what a treat. And a fountain so refreshing in this dreadful summer heat. Fum fo fi fi. Monsters don't eat broccoli. We're crazy for construction. Yeah, construction's awesome. And we crave our fish and chips. <laughs> But monsters don't eat broccoli. It will not pass our lips. Mm -mm. No, thank you. You can take that broccoli and put it somewhere else. Oh, you cannot force us monsters to eat vegetables we hate. But humans have the garden. We will eat the garden gate. Fum, fo, fi, fi. Monsters don't eat broccoli. Monsters love a picnic or a blanket in the park with a clump of giant maples and their yummy, gummy bark. Mm. Fun fo five fee, you're chowing down on broccoli. Oh, <laughs> wait, say what? This isn't broccoli, it's munchy, crunchy, crunchy cheese. And wow, they are delicious. Mm. <laughs> Another helping, please. <laughs> and that's Monsters Don't Eat Broccoli by Barbara Jean Hicks. Illustrated by Sue Hendra. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our story time today. Just to recap, this is what we read. Jack and the Beanstalk and the French Fries by Mark Teague. Spider Sandwiches by Claire Friedman uh, and Sue Hendra. Burger Boy by Alan Duran. Illustrated by May Mastopoko. And Monsters Don't Eat Broccoli. <laughs> no, they don't. By Barbara Jean Hicks. Illustrated by Sue Hendra. Thank you so much for joining this story time. It's always a pleasure. And we'll see you next week. Have a nice day. Don't forget to pick up your craft. Burgers and fries. Now we wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this with our friends.